what I have been trained to fight against is radical Islam. This ideology is willing to bring death and destruction to our way of life. Even if there's one or two radicals, you're going to be able to change the perceptions of, you know, 10, 20, 30,000, 40,000. I see the different groups that are protesting to free Palestine. You're showing your ignorance because these people wouldn't accept you. And I've seen how messed up what you're trying to champion for really is. Shame on you for, Shame on you for glorifying terrorism. Yet you're here in this beautiful country protesting for a cause that you'd be murdered for over there because you're infidels. What Hamas has perpetrated is a crime against humanity. Who dares use my religion to prosecute its They genocide. hate America and the West because we believe in freedom, and it's absolutely terrifying. Before you know my name, you have to know my story. When I was little, I used to get candy from the Israeli soldiers. I ate one and it was so good, so I took the wrapper and showed it to my father and asked him to buy them for me. Why? It's forbidden to take from the Jews. There's poison in it. If you eat it, you will die. He said Jews kill children, women and men. They lied to me. At age seven, I used to go to an UNRWA school run by the United Nations. I wanted to become a doctor. I wanted to help people. I respect the teacher came. He said to us, listen children, you must kill the Jews. Jews have three legs and an eye in the middle of their forehead. He said to us, anyone who slaughters a Jew will go to heaven. You will kill Israelis and kill Americans. Why should we kill Americans? They are not Muslim. All the children in school would chant, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, and recite the Bismillah prayer. Kill the Jews, kill America. Kill the Jews, kill America. I didn't feel good. I told the teacher that I wanted to leave. He took me outside to get some air. Ten minutes later, my father came to my class and hit me. And he said to me, slaughter the Jews. It hurt a lot. It hurt a lot. And he said to me, when you get home, I'll be waiting. As serving in Iraq, I've never seen hatred like that in some of the people. They had this belief in this greater cause to, you know, install a caliphate, you know, return to the glory of Islam. First of all, like the vast majority of Muslims are fantastic people. They just want to worship their own way. But you had extremists indoctrinate the youth and, and young men in particular. You know, you have an economic downturn and you have people living in poverty. Those are ripe targets for radical ideas. What you can and can't do are dictated by the teachings of some imam. And uh, that's terrifying to me. My father was dressed in the clothing worn by Hamas. I was afraid. He hit me over and over. He wanted me to become a martyr, to kill Jews. I turned red, then white. I was terrified. בכל הכוח, מי שלא רוצה אין דבר כזה שלא רוצה. אין דבר כזה שילד יש לו בחירה חופשית. לא, בכוח. 
אז זה עצוב, כן. תחשבו רגע, כאילו הילדים של היום, של הילדים, זה מחבלים של מחר. זה המסלול, זה החינוך. זה בבית, בבית הספר, בשכונה. זה מאוד עצוב, כן. מאוד עצוב. I grew up in Naharia, which is a Jewish town in northern Israel. I was raised as Muslim, uh, you know, to believe in Allah, which is God, to believe in the Prophet Muhammad. There was a lot, a lot, a lot of fear about what would happen to you if you're not following all the directions that you're receiving in the Quran and the teachings of the Nabi Muhammad. They're either Muslims or infidels. America is not good. America is Satan. Israel is not good. The Jews are not good. They brainwash you from a very, very, very young age. Very young age. Against the Jews, against America, against the West, against the infidels, against everything that is not us, everything that is not Islam. And I think the extremists, they're misinterpreting parts of the Quran. Someone can read the Quran and sees that God is angry on the Jewish people. And some might read this as a justification. God is angry on them. And it's okay for me to go and just kill them. My friend, my very best friend, someone like me, was able to be convinced to become a suicide bomber. All she needed probably is a bomb. And, and she would go and do it. I saw how terrorists are being made. They're not being made in some dungeon in Afghanistan. And they're not national movement for Palestine. They're a religious movement that want to transform the Middle East and the entire world into an Islamic state. But it will go to Europe, it will go to America. They would kill anyone who went against them. I was an enlisted guy at SEAL Team 4. I did seven deployments to the Middle East. The military had refocused a lot of their special operations to conduct village stability operations, VSPs. We came into a village and there was just blood everywhere. They had just finished stoning this little girl. The son had uh, fornicated outside of their societal structure and they couldn't uh, punish the son because he was the oldest son carrying that name. So they had to punch the oldest daughter. So they stoned her to death. That was my first interaction when it comes to this extremist view of Islam. Whether you're Muslim or not, you would have to abide by Sharia law, these Islamist rules that are established. My best friend, he's, he's closer to me than family, is a Sunni from Mosul, Iraq, who now is the U.S. citizen. His brother was murdered by radical uh, Al-Qaeda elements because he believed in freedom. And uh, that's what I think chilled me to the core, was that a group of intelligent young men could become so radicalized and filled with so much hate like I've never seen. I feel like you can't afford to not believe because like you're so scared of what is going to happen to you if you don't. So people who believe in jihad, everything must be Muslim. America, the Western values, they must be stopped, destroyed. 
And we teach that as something that is glorified, just. No. No. I went with my father to work in Israel. Why did I go to Israel? So that I could see the Jews with their free legs. I saw a Jew and I looked to see where his third leg was. They lied to me. I worked in a construction site that belonged to a contractor. At night I would make sure no thieves came. After a month and a half a Jewish man came. He had a yarmulke on his head. He brought me food, clothes, toys. This made me happy. I actually felt happy. And Nisim taught me to speak, write, and read in Hebrew. Nisim was the principal of a school. Just so you understand, the principal of a school in Han Yunus, Gaza, taught me to slaughter the Jews, while a Jewish principal brought me food, clothes, toys. I was in seventh grade. The second intifada started, armed violence. And our Islamist teacher would teach us that it is glorified what all these martyrs or shaheeds are doing, the suicide bombers. If you're a Jew, you're not innocent. If you're Israeli, you're not innocent. Even if you're a baby, you should be dead. All of the well-known terrorists were from my city. They were my neighbors. Terrorists between the ages of 16 and 30 put explosives on their bodies and entered Israel. Every day there was a terrorist attack. Every day there were dozens of Jews killed. Understandably, with other Arabs, I was expelled from Israel back to Gaza. Islam is to govern all aspects, social, political, uh, private aspects of everybody's life. But extremist Muslims, uh, Islamism in a multicultural environment like the United States, like the West, where immigration is just constantly moving and shifting, it just doesn't work. Our strengths are also our weaknesses, right? So they know we welcome people from all walks of life. But the risk of that is we welcome everybody. Here's what these former FBI guys write. Military-aged men from across the globe, many from countries or regions not friendly to the United States, are landing in waves on our soil by the thousands. With unchecked immigration, or naive in, in thinking that they're not going to try to take advantage of that. I mean, I've had these conversations, you know, with a really high-ranking Al-Qaeda guy. This guy lived in America, was captured in Iraq. His children were born in America. And he was explaining it to me, like, yeah, we're gonna, we want to kill you all. You're either gonna convert or you're gonna die. We want to have worldwide Sharia law. What easier way to do that than infiltrate the West and indoctrinate the young minds? People in the West are asleep. All what I described is actually like a warning. And as someone who grew up in the Middle East, I know what I'm seeing. It scares me. You see college students protesting against things that they don't understand what they're protesting for. Is there something that NYU is doing? I really don't oh. know. I'm pretty sure they're... Do you know what NYU is doing? About what? About Israel. Why are we protesting here? At yeah. Palestine will be free! I wish I was more educated. They're calling intifada. They don't even know what intifada means. They're calling from the river to the sea. They don't know what river and what sea. How, how did we get to this place where, where the best of the best in our generation is not asking the critical questions? I just read Osama bin Laden's letter to America. Osama bin Laden's letter to America explaining why he attacked Americans. Terrorism has been sold as this idea to the American people. The terrorists are people. Like, 
everything he said was valid. They're not attacking America physically, but they're attacking the minds of America. They're taking over the minds. Do you think these protesters would survive under an Islamic state? Oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> no. The people who are protesting absolutely won't survive a day. Why? Are they Muslims? Are they practicing Islam? Are they willing to kill other people for Islam? Are they women who want to have rights? Traitors or non-believers are hung in the middle of the city or the town and thrown to the garbage. Before I was expelled, they took me to court in Rehovot, Israel. I told the judge that I wanted to become Jewish and had been in Israel for seven years. There were other Palestinians that were on trial. They heard everything and whispered in my ear, Just wait, we're going to kill you. When I returned to Gaza, they put me in prison. A place of nightmares, hell on earth, darkness. And they tortured me in the cruelest way possible. They wanted me to say again what they knew I had said in the courtroom in Rehovot. I heard what you said in Rehovot, that you've been in Israel for seven years and you wanted to become Jewish. I prayed to God for him to take me. I didn't have any way to kill myself, so every time I prayed that he take me. For six months, they tortured me every day. I'm sorry. Kashali. Ada yom. Metoch shenani kufes vutzorach kizochazal ekol pam lechadash. When the Palestinian intelligence services brought me home, my father said that I was not his son and that he doesn't have children who are traitors. And he told me that if I wanted to honor my family, I would have murdered some Jews. I left Gaza and I left my old name, Ayman Abu Subuch, behind. I returned to Nisim and he helped me throughout my journey to convert from beginning to end. I called myself Dor Shahar. The meaning of Dor is a generation of peace and love. And Shahar means a new day. That's what I wanted, a world of love and peace. But make no mistake, it's not just the Jews who are considered infidels, but also you Americans. This is a religious war. You have to understand, the problem is not just in Gaza. It just starts with us in Israel, and then it will come to you. I don't think Americans should see it as this issue that's across the waters. We are naive, and we have our head buried in the sand if we don't think that is going to come here. You have people flooding in a country, and you don't need a ton of radicals to indoctrinate more and more people. Several hundred Americans that we know of have attached themselves to this extremist view of Islam. A Kansas woman charged with providing material support to a terrorist organization. This 18-year-old was on the verge of conducting a terror plot involving attacks on multiple churches in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. They want sheep. They want people who are going to blindly follow. And you're already seeing the foundation starting to crumble a bit because we can't have civil dialogue with each other without it coming in a shouting match or full of hatred. 
the next generation of Americans accept that as the norm. Now you're starting to establish a foothold in the West where that's the window of opportunity for more radical ideas that come in. And Hamas is everywhere, right? Not only Hamas, ISIS is everywhere. These movements are everywhere. And we will not stop until it enters every home. This threat is imminent. We've just lost this sense of unity. And I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but we're getting to a point of, of no return. America is super, super, super essential to the world. You're raising a generation that will change the society from the inside. Well, it's right there in front of us. And I don't want those liberties, those opportunities, the freedom from fear to be lost. Protect the Western values. Protect the human rights, which we all believe in, which we all enjoy. What happens if America is gone? Now, there is nothing more important than to fight against this ideology and protect the America that we knew. The beacon of hope for the rest of the world.